Welcome back. We're here again at Dream It, Build It, Make It. Uh, my name is Michael Hewitt. I'm the Senior Manager of Content Marketing at Iterable, and I'm here today with an amazing guest, one of my favorite people, people, not people, Shilpa Rajkopal, mm -hmm. uh, Associate Director of Marketing at Hins and Hers. Shilpa, welcome to the show. Thank you, Michael. It's so good to be here. I'm excited. Awesome. Well, we're very excited to have you. It's going to be super fun. I think Hins and Hers is a very interesting space uh, they, they occupy. So I'm, I'm very curious to hear some of uh, your thoughts. Uh, but to start off, just a little uh, about you. Tell us a bit about yourself and what you're doing over at Hins and Hers. Yeah, so I'm California native. I've been working in San Francisco Bay Area for the past eight years. Um, I can't believe it's been that long and have been at companies across e-commerce, rideshare, and most recently in telehealth at Hims and Hers. Um, this is, for those not familiar with Hims and Hers, we're a direct-to-consumer telemedicine company um, that was founded, I think, three and a half, four years ago. So pretty, pretty young, went public in uh, February. So I've just been there on this journey from when it was a small startup through growth and in that time have gone from basically the first hire to do CRM life cycle to growing the whole team and, and managing it here. So that's what I do. Mm, customer engagement, retention, working on lifetime value, um, growing the email marketing program for growth. And it's been a lot of fun. And one thing I have to say, uh, all opinions say are my own and not representative of my company. Yeah, so we're talking to we Sopa so and not, not uh, I'm, I'm, it's, it's yeah, interesting yeah. to hear that, that. Uh, that it's so young because I feel like I must have been at the top of the uh, the advertising list because I feel like I've been hearing. Uh, <laughs> <at the beginning. laughs> yeah, yeah, you're the target demographic. At some point, I know when I talk to men who are just, you know, between 25 and 50, like you should know who we are by now if you live in a major city. But yeah, awesome. Well, uh, you're talking about yourself, and I love to start off talking with marketers about themselves as consumers. I think a lot of times we're mm -hmm. talking to customers and we forget that you're speaking in marketing terms. So I'd love to hear about it from your side, what you think is a good customer experience, and if there are any good features that show customer experience that you keep an eye on, and what are some good brands that you think are doing a good job with this? Yeah, so I remember hearing once that um, good customer experience or good UX is 99% invisible. Like you don't even really notice it's there. You reach your goal without there being very much friction involved. It all goes really smoothly. You're not really noticing the things people are putting in place and you're just getting there. And I think to me, that's a really good customer experience and one to aspire to in and of itself. But I think a really great customer experience is one where you feel super excited using it. You have these not just moments that are frictionless, but ones that are super um, fun and you feel an oomph of joy, you feel positivity, you feel, um, you feel something throughout. And I think that's what all marketers and really good product leaders are trying to get out of a, of a experience, not just um, that it works, but it, it makes people feel really great. And experiences that I really enjoy, I think there's a few. Um, Spotify always comes to mind with digital product. I don't even think of it as a digital product, but it really is. And it is invisible to me how they're getting me the right music that I like. And it's so easy to share with all my friends and find inspiration and um, find out what's new, find out what artists are in town. And so I feel like the music experience integrates into my life in a way that I don't even know what features they've launched. I just know that it's doing all the things that I really love. Um, so I think it's both good and great to be up together, customer experience. Um, Nike, I have become this huge fan of their digital experience recently. Um, I like their shoes. I'm not like a sneakerhead or anything, but they have some amazing digital app experiences. You become a member and they have Nike Training Club and Nike Run Club. And like everyone in the pandemic, I've just been looking for different ways to stay active and fit. And the digital experience is super seamless, really tight. Um, Nike Run Club has coaches that do coach guided runs. And I think it's pretty in line with the brand. They get people really excited about doing the activity that they want you to stay engaged in and about being active, about, about feeling really positive about doing that, not intimidated. And I think um, I love Nike for that. And so given a choice of shoe to buy, maybe I'll buy Nike because they get me they get me running. And um, the last one I'll mention is Everlane. I just really 
it's so, you know, classic direct to consumer company, but their in-store experience is super integrated with the site experience and doing a return or going in and um, browsing. It just feels very slick and seamless and uh, branded. Like I feel how I feel on their website is how I feel in the store. It's all minimal. Um, and I think they do a good job of integrating that throughout. So I think what we're going to start to see a lot of brands from direct to consumer starting to do that um, as they launch in store experiences too. That's awesome. This is some great examples. I, I've definitely thought about the Spotify one before. I feel like the for you section at the end of the year, like it's just, it's personal yeah. for you. Uh, and then I love that Nike has the, uh, the ability to turn their, shoes into like a lifestyle that's behind it uh, I, I agree that the nike run like that run club app is incredible it's a, it's a good job for sure do you use it ever i i have a long time ago i haven't since because yeah. i stopped running but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Is great anyone who's not a runner like me people like me i i i push them towards it and there's so very few things I'm like, God, you have to download this and do this yeah. so they're doing they're doing something right it's a good way to get started yeah um, well, back to what you and your team doing, I wanted to, I'm just curious, uh, for Hims and Hers, uh, obviously there's two names in it. How does the marketing differ between the two and how does the like, um, experience change between uh, the two brands? So I'll start with what's similar between them both, because on our side, you know, we're thinking about the engineering, the platform, they're built in a pretty similar way in the same kind of piping or infrastructure is used to build both experiences. So in a lot of ways, they're similar. And what we're trying to get at is similar with both. We want telehealth care to be easy, convenient, um, destigmatized for conditions that people don't really like to care for, empowering throughout. Um, and we've made sure the site experiences and flow really do that on both sides equally. Um, but what I found to be different just as a marketer here, and so I don't know that I can broadly say we're approaching these differently, but on the her side, especially with more in this like e-commerce space in the space of uh, one of our main products is uh, skincare, women are so informed and they've been marketed to for so long that it's tougher. They're like a tougher nut to crack. They don't really engage. I can tell you at least with CRM side, they're not really engaging and converting with emails like this um, because they get so many in their inbox and they're told about so many product options for so long. And so there needs to be on her side, way more education on why us and um, a lot more, we have to prove our value quite a bit more um, and establish our credibility. And so I think in our celeb partnerships that has helped quite a bit with credibility so we can stand out a bit more. We did one with JLo and then Miley. And I think those really help um, definitely with that aspect. With the HIMSS customers and what attracted me to come to the company originally was I was so curious about marketing, you know, self-care treatments to HIMSS because I don't think men have traditionally been marketed this for a really long time. And so breaking into this space is very new and breaking into it in a way that isn't like ultra you know, macho, like, you know, plaid and black and, or like neon green, like just in a way that's beautiful as well. And so I think the HIMSS customers have been a lot more receptive and this is really new for them. And so it's been interesting to see how receptive they are. We're pretty direct with their, our messaging to them and very much about solving a problem, fixing an issue, being really proactive. And so to them, it feels like a lot of this self-care stuff is a actions for them to take for making themselves better. And I think that's what we see. I see in all my male friends, I see in all these men that I know, they wanna make themselves better in all the ways. And I feel that this generation resonates with that messaging. And so that's what we've tapped into on the him side, which feels unique and special to me. Yeah, that's fascinating. Like you have a pretty distinct line between personas that you're talking to. Uh, yeah. I think a lot of companies don't necessarily have that, that stark of a line that, operate across it's really it's fascinating and I, and I agree that it's very much like a very different experience as far as the him side being a, a man that has received the marketing from him before um yeah it, it's very different from like the classics of like rogaine where you're like all right it's not right. as at all you're just gonna go buy it randomly at the store but this is very much so like it's direct it's personalized it's, it's you 
the entire time. It's really, it's, it's really interesting. Um, but on that same note, can you kind of walk us through what the typical customer journey is uh, for either or? You can you can decide or if they're similar or the same. Uh, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. So it really just differs based on what product someone purchases. So for those who might think Tim's just looks like an e-commerce site. That's true in some instances. If you're just getting gummies, you go through a normal checkout flow, you check out the product and it's yours. Um, but for our core products, those are telemedicine visits for um, prescription treatments. And so in those cases, the customer would really start out with a visit or a consultation that's done completely online. So they fill out some information about themselves, uh, medical information, which is then sent to um, medical providers. And during that time, um, depending on the condition and the state that they're within and some policies, um, they complete either an asynchronous visit, which means the doctor reviews all their stuff, the provider reviews all the stuff offline and gets back to them with a response. And then sometimes there's an actual phone or video visit that happens. After that, um, if approved, they get prescribed and the treatment gets shipped to their door like any other treatment in really discreet packaging on a regular basis, they can manage their subscription online. And in this time, it's really a, a relationship that we're managing with them about making sure they're successful with their treatment, that they're getting the most out of it, they need to change anything they can, um, and then they can do renewals completely offline. I know in traditional system, you need to maybe call your doctor for a renewal or do another visit and go back to a pharmacy. And we've cut all of that out where it's completely online as well. Um, so it's a completely digital, yeah, digital, digital telehealth visit. That's how it goes. What sort of uh, channels do you use? Is there, I guess there's a certain um, pathway that I'm not regard. Yeah, so I think our most important communication channels um, during the core visit are still email and SMS. And it's so critical, actually, because customers take all these actions and then there's this waiting period before they're actually brought back into the flow. And so it's pretty important that we communicate with them about the status, if there's any actions they need to take, um, letting them know what's happening along the way because it is this brand new process to them. And so pretty active communication in that early period with those channels is, are still super key. Yeah, that's, that's great. Because I like I was saying earlier, the, the personalized aspect of hints and hurts is, uh, is a big draw for someone like me, a regular consumer. Um, and I think those channels are good examples of that. Uh, I'm also curious, and you mentioned this, you touched on this earlier about the education aspect of it. Um, a lot of the, your products touch on kind of traditionally stigmatized things like ED and hair loss. Uh, have you found that certain channels or tactics work better in discussing those stigmas or addressing them in a, to make uh, customers feel a little more comfortable? Yeah, I would say, I mean, we do, we use a lot of channels. I mean, we use blog, SEM, SEO, paid and email, um, out of home billboards, ads. And I would say the thing that probably makes the people feel most comfortable is how direct we are about how normal it is. I think just starting all of the messaging with, I remember one of our old taglines or early messaging was something like, ED is normal not doing something about it now that's that's not normal you know the idea that come on like it's not it's not a problem that you have it it's but come on we can help you deal with it or help you manage it or help you feel better about these type of things and sort of that um direct i think at that time like older sibling kind of attitude of compassionate but direct being the tone um which is you know evolving but i think that has made people feel most comfortable at just staring right at it, but not feeling shame while doing that. And um, we found even with ED, we're finding the messaging that works really well is not very direct. Like you have ED now we're, we're realizing with this broader audience is reinvigorate your sex life, like feel better, feel really confident. And everybody wants that. And nobody knows maybe what the path to getting that is, but People want to feel more, more connected with their partners. They want to feel young. They want to feel they can express themselves that way. And we want to be there for them when they can do that. Mm -hmm. um, so I think focusing on empowerment, focusing on normalization uh, across all of our channels has been super key. Yeah. And I think in putting it in a way that is 
easily interpretable is all, like there's no real like are they actually saying this not, no they're just saying it as it is and there's no reason to really think differently about it um i think that's right. a good way to go about it that's awesome um and kind of uh, expanding on that there has been a conversation about mental health, mental health a lot uh, in the past year and a half especially uh and you recently launched uh, a group of mental health business uh, items how does this impact how you are marketing to, uh, to your consumers yeah, so in the last year, we've launched uh, talk therapy and psychiatry. We also have a lot of free resources for content um, from a lot of therapists that we've partnered with. And we're really planning on expanding that part of our business more. Um, obviously, we saw with the pandemic, there's this huge need for support in, on the mental health side. And it's really a part of health. And along with, um, you know, our core values, it's all about accessing, uh, increasing access to previously stigmatized uh, conditions. And our platform is really already built for that. And I think uh, Hims and Hers can play a really exciting role there. And um, I think over the next year or so, we'll just start to see more investment in that space um, as it's just, yeah, a growing need. And I'm excited to see how Hims and Hers plays a role there. Yeah, it's really cool. I, I remember in the beginning, it's just like, okay, I didn't stay in this one vertical, but it's cool to see how it all can become one cohesive ecosystem for you to work with. Yeah, and that's for everybody. You know, it's not for anyone who comes from a certain condition. It's sort of this foundation and um, something we can all use support with. Yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a great uh, segue into looking towards the future. I like to close these things out with a, a look to the future. Um, and so I'm curious where you think there are opportunities for the customer experience overall, whether it's for hers and hers or just marketing in general, like where, where do you see us going? <laughs> um, I think, I mean, in general, I see us being someplace that is this hub, is this one main resource people come to for self-care and for their needs overall. Um, and they feel empowered to to really take control of it. I think our healthcare system is not really set up for us to take control of our needs and keep tabs on them and manage them without going through a pretty messy system. And I think Hims and Hers is gonna play more of a role in that um, in the future and really feel like a place you can manage it all um, and hopefully continue to push uh, the limits on what is considered stigmatized and what's considered you know, taboo and what we don't talk about and bring it all to light because everything needs to be discussed. And if it has to do with our health, it's natural and that should be talked about. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, I think that's where you're gonna see us. You're not, we're not going anywhere. That's awesome. It's great to hear. Well, thank you so much. This is, I, I always love chatting with you and now I get to do it on screen with other people watching. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if our viewers have any other questions for you, how can they find you and reach out to, to learn more? Yeah, uh, reach out on LinkedIn, Shilpa Raj Gopal. I think my name will be in whatever resource, wherever this gets published. Feel free to include uh, my full name and find me there, message me, and I'm happy to chat. Awesome, yeah, like she said, I'll put everything in the description below. Um, but yeah, thank you so much again. It's been a pleasure. Yeah. Uh, I think of everyone has learned a bunch today. Um, and to the rest of you, thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Have a good one.